talking about. Darren, thank you. Let's talk to the Shadow Home Secretary, Yvette Cooper, who's in North London. Good morning to you, Miss Cooper. Good morning. Uh, as we heard there, when people hear about a political party talking about immigration, what they think is restricting immigration. That's, the, what, that's the, what people jump to. So as far as that concerns, what are the migration targets that Labour has in mind should it be in power come May the 8th? Well, we want to see lower migration, but we're not going to set a net migration target in the way the Tories have because that's just in tatters. And we think the right thing to do is to have different kinds of targets for different kinds of migration and also to address the consequences of migration and in particular we know that there is a significant problem with agencies and employers who are dodgy employers who are deliberately exploiting and using immigration to undercut local wages and jobs that's a driver of low-skilled migration it's also part of a race to the bottom uh, and that is unfair on everyone and that's why I think it needs to be tackled with both stronger laws and stronger enforcement so when you say different numbers for different types of migration Give me some examples. So, for example, we know that there is something called the student visitor visa, which is for uh, people who are supposedly coming for temporary student courses where there isn't enough enforcement, there isn't enough, well, we know from the independent inspectorate that that is uh, being misused. So, and the number of people coming on those temporary courses uh, without having to even prove the kind of course that they're coming to has doubled in the last few years. We think that's not right and we think that there's a problem there. We would tighten that enforcement and we would expect to see lower numbers coming, coming on those sorts of visas. However, we also think that we should be encouraging overseas university students who are coming to take graduate and postgraduate courses because that brings billions into Britain and that has a, a, a huge beneficial impact on our economy. So the point is to recognise there are different kinds of immigration. We would have much stronger action on illegal immigration where we think there should be stronger border controls. We would have a thousand more border staff in order to do proper border entry and exit checks, things that aren't happening at the moment, and to tackle illegal immigration and the way that uh, there's no proper enforcement around overstaying of visas as well. We, we know that the electorate are, are getting very savvy in this election, and partly because things are so close that you know, you, you, you'd expect people are looking at things in more detail. When they hear you say that you want to you know, cut down on immigration, or at least some forms of immigration, they are going to want to know by how much? Even if you're not setting a specific net migration target, you must have some indication of, of, of roughly how much you want to reduce immigration by. Well, David Cameron set his net migration target, no ifs, no buts. It was his promise to the British electorate, and that's now in tatters. I think the worst thing, when you're dealing with something as significant and as important as immigration, is to make grand promises that in the end nobody believes and can trust because of what we've seen this government do. And I think the important thing is to increase confidence in the whole system and make it fair. Immigration is important for Britain, but it's got to be controlled and managed so that it works in a fair way for everyone. And that's what we're going to do. It's why if, we've if, uh, set out areas where we think the benefit system, for example, should change. It's where we've said there should be, as Ed will be talking about today, more emphasis on people speaking English so we don't have divided communities. And we've got to look at all of the different aspects of immigration, but set out credible plans that people can have confidence in. But when you, when you spell that out, Ms Cooper, people may look at that and say, aren't you saying... Yeah, in another way, what Nigel Farage is saying. He talks about having a point system like uh, Australia has. I mean, aren't you effectively saying the same thing, that you need to reassess immigration, that you need to look more specifically at who wants to come here and why, and make judgment calls on that? Well, we're saying that there's different kinds of migration and you have to have different uh, rules and different frameworks in place for that. But there's a very big difference, I think, between our approach and Nigel Farage's approach. Uh, firstly, I think he wants to simply divide people and exploit people's fears without having practical answers. And on this key issue about the exploitation and undercutting that is uh, so unfair on everyone, there's a huge difference between us because when Nigel Farage and the Conservatives want to reduce employment protection, 
production and to leave it to the market, we think that would actually make the problem worse. That would lead to more but, undercutting, but, would but drive has, more low-skilled migration no, no, let's, let's because be you have has, employers, hasn't it makes it easier for employers to exploit it. Hasn't this government mm. increased penalties on employers who pay less than the legal minimum when it comes to migrant workers? But they're not enforce. <coughs> sorry, they're, they're not enforcing it. That's the, that's the real problem. You have, uh, for example, a drop in the prosecutions and uh, the fines for employers who are employing people illegally. We've had only two prosecutions for the national minimum wage. This Parliament, they're not actually enforcing it. That is the big difference. We want both stronger laws, so we would make exploitation a crime, but we would also have much stronger enforcement and a new unit in the Home Office that would draw together the enforcement plan so that we can actually make sure that the rules are being enforced. How can anybody have confidence in the system if they think the rules are being broken and nobody is doing anything about it? Well, you, you have effectively said that Labour wants to see migration drop, immigration drop, be more closely monitored in one way or another. I mean, the bottom line is you can't do anything, can you, whilst we're still a member of the European Union? Well, I think there are all sorts of changes that you can make, including we would change the benefit rules so that people need to be contributing before they claim uh, and uh, can't claim benefits for till they've been here for at least two years. We also think there are changes that should be made, for example, around checking criminal records. At the moment, not enough is done to check criminal records for people who have come here from other parts of Europe and also to make sure that if people have committed crimes, then they should be returned to their country if they've just arrived and committing significant crimes that still doesn't take place in the way that it needs to so I don't think for example you should have uh, free movement for criminals but we do also think it's really important for us to be part of the European Union we hugely benefit from our trade across Europe from being part of uh, that wider market our businesses and companies that export to Europe but also can benefit from easy imports from Europe it's incredibly important to our economy and we think that's right and, and that we should continue to do so Yvette Cooper, thank you. Well, you can watch Ed Miliband's speech on immigration live here on Sky News 12.45 today. And we've got a special report by our campaign correspondents on what the parties have